How's it, how's it guys? Got a fantastic treat for you today. We are talking to Obi Oberholzer, who is one of South Africa's most famous photographers. His landscape photography of the South African bush or Southern African bush and, and, and people and landscapes is just a joy to behold. It was wonderful to spend time talking with him, hearing about his approach to photography, advice he would give, you know, photographers who might be a little bit stuck, and of course how he goes about creating these fantastic and unique images of, of the landscape of his homeland. Anyway, without further ado, let's go over and hear from the man himself. All right, so here we are. Yeah, so we have today the great Obi Oberhauser, who I am exceptionally fond of. He is one of my favorite. Photographers all times. So how's it, Obi? How are you doing? I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm wearing uh, my favorite John Lennon uh, t shirt just in case, you know, give peace a chance. <laughs> uh, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So, um, just you know, to, to give the guys like a little bit of a background to you, um, because obviously, while in South African circles you're, you're fairly well known, um, you know, for viewers in America, you may be less well known. So, Briefly, you know, how did you get involved in photography and, and give us a quick view of your, your career up to this point? Well, it all started with my uh, mom who took me on long journeys when I was a little boy of 1911. And uh, then I had a, a Kodak reflex camera and she took me to Pisa. This is actually my first picture I ever took. Took me to the Pisa and I, I straightened the, the leaning tower in my frame. And then I, when I came home, I had it printed and I told all my friends that the churches were falling over. So uh, that, that was when I started on, a, on a, an old uh, Kodak camera. Yeah, and then I went to uh, Stellenbosch University and studied photography uh, amongst other things, like I made Tussenberg famous with other friends. Uh, and then the teacher who was German said, you've got to go and study photography. And I said, study? She said, yes, uh, there's no school in South Africa in the 19, was 1968, 1969. Mm. So uh, I went to study at the Bavarian State Institute of Photography uh, in Munich, in München. And in those years, there were only two photographic schools in the world, the one in Vienna and the one I went to. And it was very difficult because the first time I learned how to work and to play, not like at Stellenbosch. And I worked extremely hard and I, I had to learn uh, better my German. Yes, and then to make a long story short, I came back and I hummed it in a hard photographically, came back in 1974. And then uh, my mom again, I uh, saw this uh, ad in the newspaper that said lecturer wanted for first a start of a graphic school in urban. So off uh, young Obi went and became a, a lecturer at the Natal Technicon. Uh, and uh, I was uh, very enthusiastic and I tried to, about my own work and I tried to instill this enthusiasm uh, with the students and I, I have so many quotations I used to say to them. I always used to start my lectures by saying, uh, good morning class, mm. uh, but I said to them in photography, if your sails are not filled with passion, your ship will never leave port. And that I really instilled contact with uh, so many of those students who are now my first year way over 50 years old. <laughs> like the one Harry, Harry lives in uh, Sweden and Janine lives in uh, Sweden. And like I said, when I look back, the scattlings of Africa. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. Then, and then I got a better, better uh, post or a situation because of Nature's Valley, where I had a cottage and I went to Rhodes University in Grahamstown which was a great time and I had some fantastic students and I uh, lived quite hard and I worked extremely hard. Uh, and I uh, rose university from the great British uh, um, colonialists. Uh, I always spelled Rhodes, uh, R-O-A-D-S, so that the administration people would never get me to do any admin work, which, which was great. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, and then I, during my long vacations, I, I, had, the, I had the opportunity uh, to travel this southern lands or the great southern lands, um, which I've always done. At first with a combi and this and that and mm. slept outside and in graveyards. And uh, it's, it became a, a thing that I really love to do is to share images uh, 
of, you know, like I call it, even for in those years, the happy, sad land. Yes. And yes. then yes. 2000, it's, it's, I just retired. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, uh, a, ha it's a happy, sad land. Is This is your new uh, monograph that's coming out soon, yeah? This is the new, the new book I've just managed to, it, it, it's still on the runway. We still need a couple yeah. of uh, orders. I think this yeah. will be my... Uh, I speak of the creation, but I think it's my 14th coffee yeah. table book. And it's it's, it's about uh, this this incredible countries. Well, well let's include uh, um, uh, Mozambique and Namibia. And fortunately, I, I was a pers uh, persona non grata for, for uh, Zimbabwe for many years because I, uh, I called uh, Bob McGave the biggest asshole in uh, <laughs> Africa. And uh, yeah. then I then I couldn't go back there for a while. So, yeah, so uh, Happy Sadland just tells the, with hope, I, I hope yeah. uh, the, the story of this, uh, this incredible continent, which is indeed, there's a lot of happiness and a, a great deal of sadness. In, in, indeed, indeed. And I think anybody who's been to, you know, to Africa will get a, get a feel of that. And, and the, the images in this, this new monograph, are they, are they new or are they sort of like a, a collection of your previous work? Um, that's a good question. Look, they're quite they're one or two or ten out of yeah. uh, out about 150 that are quite old. But I've always, you know, I've become fairly known for my writing. And and believe it or not, I had extra lessons of English in at, in matric in high school, yeah. and I I can't write. I only write like I I photograph, um, always in a slightly haphazard way. <laughs> uh, that's that's what it's a lot of stories so you know people say that i'm a storyteller amongst other things yes absolutely and i and i see you know you talked about so like being in a haphazard uh, sort of your, your approach and and i find this is one of the, the, the joyous things about your photography is that while the, the technical aspects of things are, 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 are very you know well thought out and they're, they're you know they have a, a very i won't say serious approach but, but an approach takes it properly, for want of a better word, that yeah. there are within a lot of your photographs, um, you know, like random elements that just sort of turn up, I think also because of the, you know, the, the style that you, you photograph using the um, the long exposures and the torchlight. So, so you know, so these, these kind of haphazard, as you said, events turn up and you, but you're happy to keep them in, that, that they are not mistakes, that maybe somebody else would go, oh, that's a mistake. Uh, and I'm thinking specifically one which I don't have in front of me, but I'll put it up on screen for the viewers, is from, um, there's a book where there's, there, you're photographing a family at a table. And you've obviously, been, I think, been running around popping flashes. And the little boy's been following you around the room as you move. So every time you pop a flash, his face is in a different place. And, and I just love that because the parents are very much like, I'm just going to stand because nobody's told us to, to, to be still. And this little boy's like, no, nah, dude, I'm just going to do my thing. And I love that because, it, you know, so many people would go, man, the kid moved. He's ruined the picture. But you're just like, no, nah, leave it in. So, so I love that sort of thing. And we're going to look at some of your, um, some of this work that I think is, 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 is kind of, certainly for me, you know, my favorite sort of period where you're doing lots of the, um, you know, the painting with light. And we're going to talk through it because I think it's, it's a, a, um, it's an approach that a lot of people could, you know, connect with. I mean, anybody can, can do this. It doesn't require specialist equipment. And it, and it tunes us into, or something I feel that tunes us into, the playful element that we can have in photography, where you go from thinking that light is something that is beyond our control, that we can only kind of modify it with, you know, flashheads and reflectors and things, that it becomes a tangible object that we can actually physically hold and splatter where we want to on the images. Um, so with having said all of that, I'm gonna, we're gonna jump into an image that, um, that I recall you talking about many, many years ago when I was <laughs> as a, a long head student um, full, of, full of snot. And, uh, and this is the, um, the very wonderful photograph of, um, oh, I've forgotten the name of it again, <laughs> silly of me. It is, um, uh, what was it? It's, it's a pass. 
Swartberg Swart, Swart Pass, there we go. So here we go. So this is, um, for those of you who are sort of not familiar, um, this is um, uh, obviously a pass like a sort of thing in, in South Africa. And um, actually rather than me waffle on about how you do this, we're gonna talk, talk to the man himself. So Obi, would you like to talk us through how you, well, how you did this? Well, you know, I'm just say it before I start that this, I never coined this term, uh, uh, painting of light. I mean, I started doing this uh, in the late seventies and the early eighties and somebody came up with this idea, uh, are you painting with light? So I never claimed to have started it, but I have sure used it. And it started initially on my long uh, trips when I slept, still slept outside because I was younger and under the stars in a sudden cross. Uh, and I would then be in a canyon or somewhere and at night, uh, I would just paint and play around with these very strong, powerful hunting torches, which you can see over here. This is a yeah, one, yeah. one candela torch I, I had. And uh, then I started to use it in my photography. And one of my, also there were, I must say that, that what's important of these long exposures that in the heyday of, when we use a thing called film, uh, and uh, <laughs> after two or three seconds, the, the film loses its sensitivity tremendously. So after two or three seconds, uh, six sec meters, six seconds becomes 12 or 15, and 12 seconds becomes two minutes, and two minutes mm -hmm. becomes uh, 20 minutes, so on. So it gives you the opportunity, this failure, which we call the reciprocity law failure, enabled me to drive up and down a pass. So this is a uh, 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 Swartberg Pass. It's the most beautiful area uh, of South Africa uh, at night with the full moon, that <laughs> that streak up there. Mm. Somebody asked me, uh, what is that new one, neon tube in the, <laughs> in the Actually the moon moving, a time exposure. This exposure, uh, obviously I'm using F16 or F22, so small aperture. So I can slow my exposure down for two, three hours. I see there are uh, three hours moonrise. So the moon rises and young Obi then started at the top. It's pitch dark. There's not, I mean, it's not pitch dark, but there's no car around. So uh, for funny places, a bottle of wine, just he's at the top, puts his light on, it starts the exposure and travels down the S bends, uh, down the spars, and he puts another bottle of wine at the bottom. He goes up again, <laughs> and has a sip comes down again but in the during this drive with arm out the window he's got a torch uh, and he shines up the edges so you can see the, the lit edges yeah, yeah, as yeah. he goes and then coming back again on the other side he lights up the side and then uh, what was funny in this story and then of course with all this uh, drinking and driving um, uh, with nobody around uh, I just uh, 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 there was a combi there, Volkswagen combi, and I just went to sleep. I wanted to have a party actually, played the music and had a party, <laughs> and I wanted somebody to jo uh, join me there, and of course nobody came, so uh, I just fell asleep in the middle of the road. So that's I the moon that. rise, time exposure, using uh, torches over the Swartberg Pass. Oh, long story. <laughs> that, is enough. that is a bit, the thing is, you know, as a young student listening to you recount that story, we were just like, you know, it was like, this is the length, you know, we, you know what young people are like, you know, we're all kind of lazy and stuff. And we're thinking, dude, you know, you, you spent, you know, three hours or something, you know, creating this photograph. Um, and of course, because of, as you mentioned, this is film, you don't see the results until you go back and, you know, you process the film and, and you get all the, you know, things back. So you don't even know if it's, if it's worked. I mean, obviously you haven't, you know, when you, when you photograph a film, you have a rough idea, you kind of get it. But you know, it was it was taking a leap of faith that that you would end up with this 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 photograph, and 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 I just I love this idea about you know committing to it to an image, um, and and not in a kind of a very earnest serious way. It's more like okay, I've got an idea, and we're just going to run with it. And and this is kind of a, a, a thing that I wanted to to touch on is that you very kindly sent through some. Uh, you know, so, so not necessarily before and afters, um, but when you've seen the um, the scene itself, 
and then you've you've you know what you've kind of resulted with. And here's a thing: Are this, is this in Namibia at uh, like Swakopmund around there? Yeah, um, that is a. Uh, you know, before I just quickly tell you about that, yeah, I think yeah. one of the main things that that I that I have in my small kitty uh, is uh, is that I always say that the, in traveling through Africa, your best partner, your best friend uh, to have with you is a sense of humor, and I've always yeah. stuck with that because uh, you know in Africa, in Africa, if you think you know, beware, you probably don't. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. This is a uh, this is a diamond area uh, in the Namib Desert in Namibia. Yeah, yeah. It's a place uh, that I love greatly, loved by all, all photographers in in Southern Africa. It's called Kolmanskop, with all these these abandoned That's the place. Uh, yes, yeah. yeah. Diamond houses, and this this specific place is called Grasplatz of Deutsch, yeah, and yeah. that means grassy uh, area area of grass. Which they named it because the, during the the Kaiser Titan, the German rule, uh, they used to drop uh, uh, food for the horses at this place. This grass plot. So I saw this. I went for a what we call a a, uh, a recce, and I saw this potential, and then came back much later, had a long exposure on film, where in which I could then actually walk up to the house, lighted with my tungsten halogen beamer of a spotlight uh, walk down again and light these uh, railway tracks and throw some light on the, the grass plots uh, and there we have the the scene before and after which is so important in this doing this thing uh, it, it's obviously now much difficult on digital uh, film because it's so much more sensitive i still do it but my exposures are um, much shorter yeah. the most important thing in the heyday of film is that i, I would peg my my exposure, uh, peg my my time on the sky. So I would wait till it's twilight, darker, darker, till the sky reads uh, F16, and then I know of my little uh, chart that F16 yeah. would be uh, five minutes or 10 minutes. Okay, well, that's, as, as you mentioned, you know, obviously digital these days has, has kind of changed the landscape, as it were, sort of completely. But, you know, look at, you're talking about landscapes. What is it that you are particularly drawn to? I mean, is the, do you just kind of go with a gut instinct when you see an image and then sort of give it some ideas or, or what, what, yeah, what attracts you to the possibility? Uh, well, that's, that's a good, good one. Uh, you know, what I've learned, uh, <laughs> I'm looking over my screen, above my Mac, and they have a little frame thing that says, "A man, a man can make mistakes for years and call it experience." <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, yeah, you know, with all the travels I've done over fifty years, uh, one learns to to visualize. I can I can go past an image, and I would know how it how it would look to visualize the final print and that's the art for me uh, I don't snap around or or take many shots so if I think inside my diesel and dust filled mind uh, yeah. that is a good picture I will stay and come back and, and do it again so all of these you're showing uh, obviously a, 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 that's a digital one on a Canon I think yeah yeah, uh, yeah and, and that's a short exposure where the sky is quite dark already and I've walked off camera uh, mm -hmm. use what is interesting now uh, I'll show you just not on the screen I don't know if you can see me can you see me on the, the screen yeah uh, you know I'm using a, 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 a Clara's uh, LED now okay. um, which is a very very powerful yeah. 1800 1, oh, yeah, yeah there we go there we go yeah 1,800 lumens, mm. um, but it's a very cold light, is LED yeah. light emitting diode. But so what, what I do now is I use, I cut up an old color negative, six, seven color negative. You can see that there, uh, which I now place in front of the uh, front of the camera to give me a warm light. So I have a, a cold light. Okay, yeah. Light and I've got a warm light. So. You can see in that previous shot of the 
somewhere. Uh, well, I've forgotten the name. There, <laughs> I, I used the I used the, the warm light on the on the cover trees in that old broken building, and I used uh, the colder light on the sort of uh, a dead plant in the front. Yeah, is this is this uh, the the quiver tree one? Um, let me just bring that up for you. Uh, eventually, there we go. All right, is, is this the one you were talking about? Oh, yeah, the, those are also the, the famed uh, cover trees. Now, again, uh, I've worked on that. I'm going to start with exposure mm. for the normal viewer, for, for the guy sitting in his, in his tent, it looks like almost dark. But so, yeah, I'm using exposure here of a uh, half an hour or, or an hour F16 for depth of field. Where I then leave the camera, obviously a tripod, and I walk and I, I light three, one, two, uh, two, and three, and four. Uh, you can see the one is a little bit more from the side, whilst the moon is rising. Yeah. And the silly student asks me again, "Is that a neon tube in the sky?" <laughs> and then I say, "Yes." Yeah, it's just it's just easy. But one of the things you know, I think you were talking uh, because uh, if I'm correct, this is shot on film. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's film, yeah. Um, so, so one of the things that it may be a misremembered uh, memory or what have you, but I, I seem to recall possibly that you said that you did some sort of dodging and, and, and burning in the color lab, which to a young student was like, well, hang on, but the colors shift when you do that. Um, is, is that true? Did, what sort of post work did you do in the, in the dark room on these, if anything? Well, um, you know, in this, and it was a long time ago, yeah. I was quite enthusiastic or I really teach quite a few students how to color print and I made them learn all the color opposites and what to do with dodges and and older backers and all sorts of things. Yeah. yeah I think because of the the warm tungsten light I used in those days uh, I must have made the, the the final print slightly cooler. Yeah. In other words uh, so the tree wasn't that yellow and then obviously area where there's no light like the sky Sky yeah. goes bluer, so I played yeah. with that. I can actually see that I must have also lit some of the the rocks in the, the background. So it's yes, there's pretty... little there's little dabs dabs around, yeah. and you know, and, and I think this is this is kind of you know we because I'll bring them up on screen so people can see them a lot nicer. But um, you know, you're you know you talk about the landscape and you talk about you know sort of um, you know Africa and 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 all these sort of places and. Do you, I mean, you know, I know that you said you're, you're heading off to, um, uh, to Holland soon to, um, to do some, some, are you working on a new book or is it just for personal work or? I mean, when you, you said you're, you're off to, 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 I think you said Amsterdam, is that, is that for oh, work? Oh, yes, yeah, I've got so much going on now with me. Oh, <laughs> what I, what I, I did uh, over the last few years, uh, I worked for a magazine called, called Country Life. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, well, that was quite nice because I could uh, travel and they really paid me nothing, which I can travel more. Anyway, so yeah. I started doing these Dutch, South African Dutch uh, uh, towns with Dutch names because, you know, in the early days when the, the Dutch uh, 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 East India Company landed, Jan van Rieven, they came up and they were all Dutch speaking and then the, the Boers trekked away from the English. Uh, and they all formed these little, some of them towns with Dutch names because they obviously longed for home. And I started to photograph some of them, Utrecht and Haarlem and Amsterdam yeah, yeah, yeah. and so on. So um, what I've done now, I've almost finished this African ones and I'm going to, in two weeks time, I'm going to the Netherlands, which are called Flatland, Plutland, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. To, to photograph the original ah, okay oh, lovely okay so 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 again a nice thing and that is you know for um yeah for viewers who are not familiar um south Africa is is, is it was colonized mostly by the dutch um back in the day yeah. so lo lots of, of dutch names so so i like these kind of ideas you know and and talking about you know the, the landscape and, and that you said diesel and dust that's that's in your, your blood um yeah. is that i i find the images that you create of of africa both uh, you know, sort of in, uh, interesting because obviously I'm seeing it through through the lens of Obi, which which I quite like. But also, they they have a very powerful feel to me. They 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 talk to me of an Africa that was kind of half glimpsed out of out of the corner of my eye. 
But what I do find is, is when I look at, like if you look at some photographers, work, you can see a very clear influence, but without sort of sounding like I'm being sort of sycophantic, I don't see much of an influence in your photography. It seems to be not necessarily devoid of, of influence, but it seems to be very much yours. So do you have, I mean, who are your influences? Well, you know, to be quite honest, uh, even though uh, in my later teaching years, uh, I had to read a, a lot about photographers and uh, uh, um, I, I, was never, I was never influenced um, by any particular photographer. I was influenced by Elvis Presley, who told me to follow that dream. Yeah. Wherever that may lead you. But uh, I was very fortunate. One day I was at some all, all uh, photographic festival in southern France. I was doing a story on uh, some vineyards or something. And uh, there was this, there was this arts, photographic arts festival. And there somebody said to me, oh, your, your hero is there. And my hero at that stage, or still is, uh, Don, Mc, Don McCullen. Okay. Uh, yeah. I love his work. And I, you know, I've always wanted to be a war photographer, but I just, I think I've got it. I don't think yeah. I have it. So thank heavens I didn't become one, because you know I'm of the, the age I would have I would have been in Vietnam. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I managed to, to corner Don McCullen also then quite younger, and I said um, we had a couple of glasses of wine together, and you know I said I, I teach about you and so and then uh, and then uh, I said Don Don uh, give me one give me one liner for my students back home. And he looked at me, he took a sip of wine and he said, tell them, I say, I use my camera like a toothbrush. It does the job. So what he's saying and what I've, I've also followed and used is that you should know your, 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 your uh, technical side, your equipment so well that it's mm -hmm. second hand. To me, there's, there's nothing worse than going to a, a camera club or speaking at some sort of photographic amateur and, and everybody ends up talking about apertures and end stops <laughs> and pixels and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so they're, they're really, it's not about like in the heyday of, of Lance Armstrong, he, you know, he said before his downfall was, mm -hmm. it's not about the bike. So for me, it's, it's not about the camera. Sure, I mean, I, I try and use the best cameras that I can get, but mm -hmm. if you can look past that and you can look not not what you're using, but what you're photographing, then, then you're, you're halfway there. And you know, for young, young, if I may, some advice, you know, so many young photographers, I'll want to, maybe they walk around, they take a picture, uh, and then it's like in the bag and then they relax. Uh, sometimes the big pictures happen just around the corner. So always yeah. stay alive, always be ready. Don't, don't throw it and say it's in the bag. And another practice that I've always followed since uh, I put the pizza up straight is that uh, when I don't have a camera and I walk around the block, I, I'm always conjuring up images, make believing somewhere. It, this sort of adds to my ex experience. It, it's staggered in the diesel and dust filled mind of mine. So if you walk around, conjure up, just look at the scene. There's a hedge and there's a plant. How would you? Photograph that. Go closer. Would I use a light here? Would I come back when it's darker? Oh, that's enough. Uh, hello. Yeah. Uh, any more questions, <laughs> Alex? Yeah. That is. I mean, you know, th these. Are, it, I, I think it's 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 wonderful to hear you say about the fact that you know the, the camera is just a tool. Uh, you know, certainly in in you know the modern world, there's there's there is for for various reasons. You know, fascination with gear and and things, and that has always been in photography. I mean, it, you know, it's not it's not a new thing, but it's been more prevalent now. And and I'm and I'm you know, it's great that you're saying that you know, if you can understand the camera, so it's second nature that if you have a you know, not a, a, a comprehensive knowledge of all the technical nonsense and stuff like that, but enough to have to not to think about it too much, that you can spend more no. time being creative, being more in the moment, as, as you said. I think that is that is an absolute joyous sort of thing to hear. I, I'm so pleased because, you know, the, the guys on the channel, everybody who watches this channel, you know, we're, we're not about the gig, we're about the ideas. You know, you know, there's all you that's just sort of thing. And, and that's kind of why, you know, listening to 
photographers like yourself who have a, 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 a deep passion and enthusiasm for photography. And I think that's kind of the word that if I have to think mm. of one to sum it up is enthusiasm for it. Um, that whenever we look at any of your images, that it seems like you aren't just going through the motions. You're not just taking pictures for the sake of taking a picture, but you are, to, to coin a phrase from Dead Poet Society, you know, like you're sucking that marrow out of life and, and whatever comes along, you just like, man, I'm just gonna roll with it. I think, you know, the, the, the faces of the people who feature in your photographs, all of them look like they're involved. You know, they're not, they're, you're not like pointing your camera at them like some sort of, uh, you know, zookeeper or something. You know, you're, yeah. you're, they're part of the process and you're, you're connecting with their lives in, in some sort of way. And I, and, I, and I hope the viewers who have watched, you know, you, you speak and listen to your, your, you know, your extremely interesting talks, you know, get a sense of this from photography. And then they take some of this, you know, that they were inspired the same way that, you know, off camera previously, we were talking about when, when we very briefly met when I was a student and you gave a talk about the Swartberg um, past story. And that evening, we all went out and took our cameras outside and started photographing the moon and things because we also wanted to try that. And then, you know, some guy puts his camera up the whole night and then forgot to open the shutter because he's a purse. <laughs> you know, it's, it's things like that. So, you know, it's, it's, I, th I think it's, it's wonderful to hear you, you talk. I think, you know, it's it's great. As I said earlier, you've got your new monograph, Happy Sad Land, coming out, uh, which I will put a link for people in the description box below in the video. And also you'll see at the back, I've got some of my, I think this is, this is one of Obi's. I think, is this your first monograph? The Irish yeah, that's the first yeah, yeah. Um, and then I like the fact that, you know, later on, you've got, uh, what was this lady's name? I'm a Rose Kluter from Ixtian Fontaine. Yeah, and then you've got her again <laughs> later on. And I think she features in another one. But, you know, you can find Obi's books on various places. And, they, you know, uh, and I would highly recommend that you, you go and you, you check them out. Anyway, Obi, I have to say it has been an absolute pleasure. You are one of my photographic heroes. You have inspired me so much, both as, as, a, as a young photographer and now as, a, as an older photographer, where I, I, I see all like you work in a whole different light. And it's been an absolute joy and pleasure. And thank you for, for being here with us. Okay. If I remember for everybody out there in photography, if you go, you'll get. If you go, you'll get. There we go. That's fantastic. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you again soon.